A very good evening to all of you. This is Business Today, your weekly business roundup brought to you exclusively on Channel I. We are ready to start yet another episode of Business Today where we bring you key business personalities for discussions along with stock market updates and detailed evaluations of certain sectors in the financial market. So let's start our program for today with Business Personality segment. We got a multi-talented business personality, a distinguished uh, guest uh, joining us today who has a very active presence in Sri Lanka's corporate world and we hope to inspire you through his success story today. So let's connect with the introduction to welcome our guest for tonight. Dr. Harsha Cabral. He was born in the year 1960 and had his secondary education at Royal College, and pursuant thereto his tertiary education at the University of Colombo, Sri Lanka, Law College and the University of Canberra in Australia. He took oaths as an attorney at law in the year 1988. Dr. Harsha Cabral was conferred silk in the year 2006, and has thus been a President's Counsel for the last 11 years. He has been in active practice in the field of corporate law for the last 29 years, mainly in the commercial high courts and the Supreme Court of Sri Lanka. He is a sitting member of the ICC, International Chamber of Commerce, International Court of Arbitration in Paris and the first Sri Lankan to be appointed to this prestigious seat. He is currently the chairman of the Tokyo Cement Group, which is the largest cement manufacturer in Sri Lanka, and is also the chairman of LOLC Finance Private Limited, one of the largest financial services provider in Sri Lanka. Dr. Cabral, serves as chairman and member of several audit committees, remuneration committees, nomination committees and related party transaction committees of the several companies. Yes, and he is Dr. Harsha Cabral. He is the chairman of Tokyo Cement Group and chairman of LOLC Finance PLC. And he also serves as a board director uh, in several companies in Sri Lanka. A very warm welcome to you. Thank you, Disanka. Thank you for the invitation. Okay, uh, first let me ask this question. Generally they say if you are a jack of all trades, you become a master of none. But in this case, you are a master of many as you have excelled in many areas, many, many areas. So how did you specialize yourself in such diversified areas as was this your original passion to be what you are today? Firstly, I must say that uh, I, I won't call myself master of any particular field. It so happened that I have got into particular areas where I have specialized. Uh, but initially, I must say that I didn't have any major, uh, say, uh, expectations or whatever. And uh, as a student, maybe we were born in the 60s, we were, that was a totally different era, where there were no mobile phones computers, iPads and iPods. So we had a fairly natural way of being brought up. So the change happened maybe towards the early part of my 20s. Mm -hmm. Because I, I must say that the maturity hits you at one particular point. Maybe after my mom's death in, when I was about 22, that changed the whole concept of my outlook in life. Where you take over more responsibilities. Absolutely, right? because uh, up to that point, I had not taken anything seriously and that was an era where even the parents didn't expect too much from you and uh, we had not heard the word stress at all times. You know, in those days it was normal case of you fail an exam, you do it again and you don't commit suicide when you fail an exam. So uh, maybe I was a very average student early and then uh, after my mom's death, I took things seriously. And thereafter, whatever I did, I must say I had done, done it seriously, especially the, my tertiary education. Mm -hmm. And uh, I must say that I started as an external student at the University of Colombo. And then I moved on to Sri Lanka Law College, where I became a lawyer. And thereafter, I did my higher studies in Australia, where I did my uh, PhD in corporate law. So with that it changed completely and then I got onto this corporate field because of the 
maybe the company law expertise uh, uh, we were brought into. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's move on to a key area of interest. Uh, Tokyo Cement is the largest manufacturer and supplier of cement in Sri Lanka today. So can you talk a little bit about the organization and its capacity? Actually, Tokyo Cement uh, Group, when you say it has about uh, five companies, uh, we call it the Tokyo Cement Group, but it is basically the, the, the main companies, Tokyo Cement, uh, Lanka, PLC. Uh, that's a listed company and it is the uh, it can be treated as the largest cement manufacturing company in Sri Lanka because uh, we have the largest market share of around 35 percent in the cement industry and uh, this is a truly Sri Lankan company it is a company that was uh, uh, it was the pioneering efforts of the late Mr. Evis Janam in the year 1982 started it in uh, the factory in Trincomalee and it, there's a fairly big operation in Trincomalee and uh, we do have imports as well uh, but the main line of business is cement manufacturing which is done in Trincomalee and uh, it is rated high because of the quality we maintain. We now have a collaboration with, uh, uh, we have sort of a uh, expertise, uh, technical know-how, all that is transferred uh, to, uh, from a company, in, a famous company in Japan called Ube Industries, which is specialized in cement. So we uh, rely on quality. Mm -hmm. So the cement company has grown very much. And uh, in addition to cement, we have a whole lot of other uh, affiliated products. We have new in inventions like the, 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 the cement blocks, the new blocks, you see then the concrete blocks, the lightweight blocks. Mm -hmm. Then we have tile bond adhesives, um, screed, and waterproofing products, and a whole lot of products which is now, we, we window them at a uh, outlet in Timbrika Sai. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is not only a cement company. We have a biomass plant in Trincomalee. We have a, a dendro plant in Mahayangana. Then in addition, we have the several uh, ready mix parts you know we have this concrete mm -hmm. ready mix products okay. all over the country we have about 11 uh, ready mix plants in operation and ready mix is in big demand now we opened recently opened uh, another plant in Mithatamulla okay. so overall it's a fairly um, uh, robust operation mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Tokyo Cement has continuously maintained top quality mm -hmm. and we insist on new <coughs> inventions maintaining quality and we have invested in a lot of uh, technological uh, uh, advancement projects and uh, we do a lot of CSR projects and we, it's treated as one of the uh, good citizens, corporate citizens of Sri Lanka. Okay, you just mentioned that you rely a lot on quality and uh, cement is the key ingredient in construction sector and to ensure a solid construction, uh, you have to ensure that you have quality cement uh, uh, being used in that construction project. So how do you ensure quality? Yeah, because now for most of the projects, especially the high rises and the mega development projects, they insist on quality. Mm -hmm. There is a uh, high uh, degree of quality being maintained. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we ensure that all our products are the best. Mm -hmm. I and mean, if you look at the, the, the market, the general market, uh, there are a whole lot of uh, low quality cements being imported yeah. from various other countries and uh, we ensure that our quality is far superior to any other product and because of that you would see that the especially the the results of the 2016-2017 annual report mm -hmm. will show that this company has done exceptionally well when you took a look at the history whereas the the turnover has gone almost 36 billion and uh, the profit after tax has increased by 76 percent wow. so that's a great achievement definitely among a whole lot of challenges because it was not a smooth sailing but uh, it has grown because of the quality standards and we ensure perfectness in everything okay if you look at the entire industry how is the cement industry doing in Sri Lanka right now cement industry has grown over the years mm -hmm. and especially in 2016 there was a sizable growth okay. 
Okay. Right? There was, I believe, about 23% growth in the cement industry because of the construction uh, field taking, uh, again, turning it around. You know, it was, uh, it was, there was a, a bit of a lull period in between, but uh, it uh, took on in, uh, especially the uh, 2016, mid-2016 was okay. And especially with the new projects, there are a whole lot of new projects that are going on, especially the, the, the uh, Port City, then the Central Expressway, then the extension of the Southern Highway, and uh, the Outer Circular Road, and uh, also the, the condominiums that are coming up. You see? Okay. And also the whole lot of hotels and the expansion in that particular construction field, mm -hmm. there is a boom. So okay. therefore, the, the, cement, uh, the demand for cement is, is high. Definitely, the, the growth itself proves that there is a heavy demand for cement. So we are now looking at increasing our capacity. Okay. In fact, we have ventured into that area. We have opened a new plant in, uh, uh, in uh, Trincomalee, and uh, we are self-sufficient with the energy side of it. Mm -hmm. We have our own uh, the, the, the power plants, we, the, the, dendro, uh, the, the biomass plant and the dendro plant, which uh, together gives about 24 megawatts, okay. so which is sizable. So uh, all in all, it's a very organized uh, system of uh, operations of this company. So uh, because of the proper management, mm -hmm. though there are a whole lot of challenges, we have been able to maintain a proper growth. And uh, I must say that the plus point is the human capital. Mm, okay. And we have a very, very dedicated team of workers. We have about 1,200 direct workers and about 2,000 indirect employees, mm -hmm. uh, which makes it uh, happening. You know? Right, lovely. So. As cement industry and construction sector are inseparable, uh, there are so many changes that are taking place in the financial market that has affected the construction sector, like uh, interest rates increasing and certain taxes being introduced. So uh, how has the cement industry been affected with these changes taking place in the financial market? Yeah, these are, I must say, certain drawbacks. Within the 2016-17 financial year, we went through a couple of tough times with regard to these uh, drawbacks because there was a tax increase, there was an introduction of VAT, and also the finance cost went up in addition to the depreciation of the rupee because uh, even when we buy clinker from abroad, we have to pay according to the dollar rates. So the cost of production definitely goes up. But unfortunately, just because the cost of production goes up, we can't increase the price of the bag of cement because uh, cement price is regulated by the state. Okay. So once it is regulated, unless it is changed by the government, as and when the price goes up, we can increase the price. So those have been taken into account and with proper management, with proper financial controls and controlling the, the, the administrative expenses, so on and so forth, the company has been able to survive even during the bad periods, but I must say we have gone through worse periods because from 83 there was the 30 year war and our factory was in Trincomalee. Mm -hmm. So during that period it was a fairly difficult task for uh, production of cement. Production of cement, transportation of cement. So even in Trinco now we have our own, uh, we have the ships which brings uh, clinker and uh, we are doing a lot of expansion in the uh, the plant for portfolio and uh, a whole lot of mechanisms have been introduced to see that there is a definite growth and uh, companies on proper track. Okay, now I will ask you a different question. As you are serving as an independent director in several public quoted companies, uh, what is the role of an independent director? Well, the role of an independent director comes from the securities regime mm -hmm. right and uh, under corporate governance mm -hmm. you would see that uh, under the corporate governance rules mm -hmm. there are mandatory requirements mm -hmm. but the mandatory role that is brought in in the Sri Lankan corporate governance sector mm -hmm. is very minimal mm -hmm. it says that there should be X amount of direct independent non-executive directors on uh, public listed companies mm -hmm. In addition to that, they say that you must have 
certain committees like audit committees, nomination committees, remuneration committees, so on and so forth. Okay. So the corporate governance mechanism which is mandatory is very minimal. Okay. So one such mandatory requirement is to have independent directors on public listed companies. Okay. Now when you say independent non-executive directors, they say uh, you must have at least one third of the board should consist of independent, independent directors. directors. Right? Okay. So all the PLCs, public listed companies in Sri Lanka, maintain that and they have to comply with that. And uh, though there are other mechanisms in corporate governance where a whole lot of other mm -hmm. good governance concepts are brought in, but this independent director mechanism has come with the mandatory code. Okay. And the role played by the independent director is mainly to ensure that proper corporate governance mechanisms are maintained in the company. That the company is properly managed, there is good governance, transparency in management, so on and so forth. Because the independent, uh, independent non-executive directors don't get involved in the day-to-day -day running of the company because there are executive directors to run the company. Okay. But when you sit as an independent director, you can see how the company is performing mm -hmm. and uh, you're not on the main payroll of the company okay right so therefore you're in a position as an independent person to put things right if you see that they are going on the wrong direction mm -hmm. right and then you put it right because now uh, i as a practicing lawyer okay my main income comes from law not from uh, being directors mm -hmm. so when i am sitting as a director, I can afford to say, well, look here, what you're doing is wrong. So th that Definitely. is the role of the independent directors, to put things right and ensure that the proper mechanisms are maintained. Okay, but in most situations, the independent directors are being appointed by the business owner or by a large shareholder of the company. In such situations, how can an independent director remain independent? That's a very good question because uh, uh, in Sri Lanka, there is a, we under the corporate governance mechanisms also, the independent directors are voted in mm -hmm. by the shareholders. Now when you say shareholders, it is basically the majority shareholders and the minority. So actually there were suggestions made sometime, whether, sometime back whether it can be done by the minority shareholders. Well that cuts across the entire uh, rubric of company law. Because directors are appointed by the shareholders. Mm -hmm. So it is correct that you may come to the board with the blessings of the, uh, the major shareholder. Yeah. But that doesn't prevent you from putting things right. right. Because you are not under obligation to the chairman or the managing director or the majority shareholder to say yes to everything. If you see something wrong, you can even make your single dissent. So being on a board, I mean... Independent directors are brought in for their expertise. Mm -hmm. Maybe law, maybe finance, maybe uh, production, marketing, yeah. so on and so forth. Yeah. So their role is clear cut. So you should not Each be under... Each one has a role. Absolutely. So you should not be under obligation to <clears throat> say yes to the major shareholders or the chairman or the manager director. Mm -hmm. So you have an independent role to play. Right, so in today's context, uh, the term corporate governance has become a buzzword, but have we really understood the meaning of corporate governance? Do we practice good corporate governance in Sri Lanka? Well, the word corporate governance is just good management. You know, corporate is company and governance is managing. We have heard the words like governor general, mm -hmm. right? And governing is managing. So these two, the corporate governance words came in the early 90s in England, mm -hmm. it was uh, uh, Cadbury Code which introduced the code of practice, best practice. That is the birth of corporate governance. In Sri Lanka also, we started our own code of best practice in 1997. So now we have a mandatory code of corporate governance and also a voluntary code of corporate governance. So the the idea of corporate governance is to see that proper governance is maintained, mm -hmm. right? You always say it's like the hapalanya. It's uh, basically to see whether the governance mechanisms are in place, mm -hmm. whether there is good governance, 
where is there is transparency in management, mm -hmm. where all the stakeholders are properly looked after. Okay. It may be corporate governance will look at, say, whether the shareholders, majority and minority are looked after well, whether the employees are looked after well, whether all the other stakeholders like the, the suppliers, the dealers, the, the, the other participants, and now the world at large. That is, you have, that is why you have corporate social responsibility or CSR projects. Mm -hmm. So corporate governance is because long years ago, if the company was making profits and if the shareholders were happy with it, they were paid dividends, mm. well, it was treated as a good company. Yeah. But today, to be a good corporate citizen, mm -hmm. you have to do that extra mile. Mm -hmm. You've got to say, well, look here, we are an exempt, we have, this company is an exemplary organization. Mm -hmm. We are treated as top corporate citizen. Now you can see the awards being given to the best corporate citizen awards, so on and so forth. Now to win those awards, you have to satisfy the different criteria. Mm -hmm. You see, and if there are any complaints from any court, because uh, gone are the days where you can make maximum profits and ruin the environment. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. so like that, you have to ensure that uh, the workplace and this particular organisation is following the correct steps or correct mechanisms of corporate governance. Okay. And also we see many family owned uh, businesses in Sri Lanka where family members are actively involved in running uh, the business business uh, operations and at the same time we have uh, large uh, shareholders having excessive control over business organizations. In such uh, situations, how do we ensure corporate governance? In fact, corporate governance has been brought in in Sri Lanka under the securities regime, under the Colombo Stock Exchange rules, uh, especially for the listed companies. Mm -hmm. The mandatory code requires the listed companies to follow the mandatory requirements of corporate governance. Okay. But that doesn't mean that all the other companies, whether it's private or single shareholder or guarantee companies or whatever, they can ignore corporate governance mechanism. It's, it's like, you know, well, Rose is a good family, good boy, good household, things like that. So you don't need to be a pop, uh, the PLC mm -hmm. to follow them. Okay. I mean, I always, when I teach my students on corporate governance, I say it's like the Ten Commandments or the um, uh, Atasil law, Dasasil law, whatever. Because, uh, I mean, if you can follow five out of the Ten Commandments, you're somewhere there, you see. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's a matter I mean, corporate governance is something you, it comes from your heart. Mm -hmm. So if the company can be satisfied, whether it's a private company or a family company or whatever, because if you go to the, uh, the SEC webpage, you will see the voluntary code on corporate governance, which is very wide. Mm -hmm. There are companies which follow those rules. They are not compelled, there is no compulsion to follow mm -hmm. them. You don't, because if you are not a public listed company, you don't need to follow any of those. Yes. But that doesn't mean you can just ignore it. Well, mm -hmm. if things are good, why not follow it? I mean, you can yes. see during uh, the tsunami, during the floods, yes. so many companies that come forward and do all yes. these good things, yes. right? There's no compulsion. So it's best to see that uh, even private companies, which are not listed, may it be small family companies, follow this and that will be to their advantage. Okay, um, at the same time, uh, uh, you have authored uh, many uh, books on company law. So can you briefly talk about the concept of uh, company law and its importance? Yeah, uh, I've written about four or five books on company law. But I must say that uh, these are fairly simple books, straightforward books. And now we have a new company, Zach 7 of 2007, which applies to all companies. Okay. All right. So all companies that are uh, incorporated in Sri Lanka will be governed by our own Sri Lankan company law. Mm -hmm. Then there is, in addition to that, you find the listed companies, which are also covered in addition to the Companies Act by the securities regime, right? Okay. Then there are specialized companies like okay. the banking companies where this, the banking regulator comes in. Then there are the insurance companies where the insurance regulator comes in, you see? So all in all, you would see that the company law is very important for every company. So the directors, shareholders, creditors, everybody should know 
a little bit of company law because that will be helpful in your corporate world. Right, so we could have continued this conversation for many hours, but unfortunately we got to say goodbye. Thank you very much for joining us today. We are indeed uh, happy to have you with us today. Thank you very much, my pleasure. Right, with that, uh, we got to move on to a short commercial break and we will be back with you soon.